The Search for Clockman. Sure. I never really cared about these lost show searches. Shows are never usually interesting, but all right. Nickelodeon's Mysterious Lost Short. All right. I'll give it a chance. Maybe it doesn't exist. <clears throat> Maybe. Nobody should ever find it. But if someone can, it's the Flood. This short animation was terrifying as a child. The scene is still burned into my mind 28 years later. It's of a young boy sleeping in his bed. Above the bed is a ticking clock. All the lights in the room are off, and it's very dark. Suddenly, the clock begins to slow down its ticking, and eventually it stops. Prime dink in the resub mode midnight. In rhetoric. When the clock stops, a greenish-bluish man climbs out of the clock. The boy wakes up just in time to see this man dressed in black, grab him out of bed, oh, wow. and kidnap him by carrying him through a window. The clock man takes the boy on some kind of terrifying adventure and brings him back to his bed before sunrise. This is a creepypasta? Yep, I imagine it's not real. Never is. In 2012, is. a user known as Commander Santa posted this message onto the Flood forums Exit tier in the one. hopes of uncovering a missing animated short from his childhood. 2082. Little did he know, however, that this thread would kickstart the search for one of the most sought after pieces of lost media. A search that lasted for five years. Wow. A piece of lost media known as Clockman. Is it real? Give it a chance. The long hunt for Clockman was at first dismissed as creepypasta bait. That's what, what I said. More than a troll looking for attention. Yeah, Others I said that. question his memory, leading some to believe that it may have been nothing more than just a fever dream. That wouldn't be my I thought at all. I just think the whole story is fake. Whilst watching it, the clock man abducted the little boy and took him to places where he did not want to go. I, I can't remember where exactly, but I seem to remember the boy repeatedly asking to go home. Clock man just ignored him like he couldn't hear him. He kept dragging the boy through all kinds of scary places. I bet it wasn't that scary. The kid's being, being a bitch. The boy and just wishing the clock man would take him home. And how he thought of the short throughout all aspects of his life. Junior high, high school, college, and even now as a father. It seemed that clock man really haunted him. <laughs> and he truly became... What the fuck? What was that last part? And even sometimes now as a father, I just want to see clock man. <laughs> what the fuck? Commander Santa described what he remembered of the clock man's appearance. A, a large bushy beard and a long cape. Several animated shorts were ruled out early on, even though they were eerily similar to clock man, such as the clock store. Yeah, this isn't exactly Nickelodeon in 1931, I'll tell you what. And the opening to Nutcracker Fantasy. But look out if you were awake past bedtime. The ragman would catch you. And when he did, she said, he would smile wickedly, point his crooked cane, and the turn fuck? you into a mouse. Man, what the fuck? Why is he such an asshole? I thought the Nutcracker was supposed to be a happy jolly guy. The series had a total of 261 hour episodes throughout its entire Gee, run. Oh my. Meaning that around 260 hours of content would need to be scoured through to find Clockman. And a large oh, amount this of control it just F wasn't really available online. There were also many other factors that stood in the way. Clockman was not the official name of the shorts. Nobody knew what it was called. And Pinwheel didn't have any sort of home media release. Man, 4chan With Commander always gets Santa's it done. Thread receiving over 800 comments within 24 hours, the stories of this short spread across the internet like wildfire. Within a single day, it had spread to World of Warcraft forums, Minecraft forums, Why? Yahoo Answers, Hippo Tank, and of course, what is 4chan, Hippo Tank? Specifically, the X Paranormal Board. Within the same year that the original thread was posted on the flood, Commander Santa went to 4chan for help. Upon his post, an anonymous jaded. user responded oh. with the second official plot summary for Clockman. Holy shit, I remember this fucking short. It was like claymation with poorly made dolls and the animation was real stuttering and shit. Then the door slowly creaks open the prime and the generic wind sound blows and the camera cuts to the kid's room at the foot of his bed. 
He struggles to open his eyes as they slowly droop, and he eventually gives in and goes to sleep. He's probably my then farts. he cuts to the clock while the second hand slowly ticks to 12. When it hits, there's like a low bell ringing sound and the camera goes back to the foot of the kid's bed. The clock man's head peeks into the room like the clock were a window. Unlike what the OP's image shows, the clock man's head <clears> then <throat> recedes back and his arms come out and pushes the clock. Here, I got a little something. Uh, this reminded me of something that I saw one time as a kid on Nickelodeon that I've never seen since. Maybe someone in the chat knows. Things of Prime Gorgar. Before we finish this one, does anyone else remember back? It would have been in 2000, 2000, 2001, somewhere in that ballpark. Nickelodeon for Halloween used to play like scary shows, if I remember correctly. Some of them were live action. One of them had like a cabin and a woman melted. And then she came back almost instantly after melting as like a giant black blob of hair. If anyone knows what I'm talking about. I, I thought it was Are You Afraid of the Dark? But I remember like what would have been five or six years ago now. I remember going back through Are You Afraid of the Dark looking there for it and I couldn't find it. So I don't think it was Are You Afraid of the Dark? And I'm pretty certain it was Nickelodeon. Clock. I guess it could have been Goosebumps. Then the clock man starts doing like a weird... I didn't Irish check Goosebumps. Rivers dance oh and the clockman looks a little different from the picture he was wearing like an all-black turtleneck sweater and a black bowler hat what his skin was green and i don't really remember him having a beard but he did have a big toothy smile and two real big eyes with very tiny pupils this guy sounds like he's way off just making the shit up the user's description of the events heavily differ from commander santos for instance the user remembers the clock no, man appearing with it, green soils. skin, a prime no beard, zero. and a turtleneck sweater and a bowler cap instead of a cloak. Additionally, he recalled that the clock man did an Irish dance upon his entrance to the child's room. Oh, wait, Haunting Hour? Wait, that sounds really familiar. Oh, it was R.L. Stein's The Haunting Hour. Don't think about it, anthology. Okay, what were the big... Okay, let's... Real quick before we get too off track... What were the big ones? Are You Afraid of the Dark? And then there was another horror anthology series for kids. I guess it could have been The Haunting Hour, but besides Are You Afraid of the Dark, there was another one. Was The Haunting Hour on Nickelodeon? Maybe that is the one I'm thinking of. Oh, this was in fucking 2010. Why are you giving me 20? <laughs> I can tell you a few episodes from the show. There was one where Shia LaBeouf was in it and he turned into a doll. That fucked me up for a long time. And I do remember there was another one where there was a camp, uh, like a summer camp on an Indian burial ground. And there was a curse that uh, haunted the whole camp. Nightmare Room. Thank you. That was it. Nightmare Room. The Nightmare Room. Yep. Kids WB. That was the one. Thank you. God damn. This, this slapped. This shit went hard. I, oh my god. I need to rewatch the fucking Nightmare Room. Like just li listen to these names. Can you see that? Dear Diary, I'm dead. <laughs> I, they weren't pulling punches, I'll tell you what. Not not on the Nightmare Room. Coming on DVD and video. It is the place where hidden fears slip oh, through the shit. shadows. Where the unimaginable becomes reality. Or else Stein will unlock the door to your scariest nightmares in the Nightmare Room. Scareful what you wish for. I actually think I have nowhere. one of these. Monster. And a bonus episode. This is your invitation into the Nightmare Room. Scareful what you wish for. This shit was nowhere. so good. 2002 was a great year. Bucks won the Super Bowl and everything. 2002 slapped. I definitely still have that on VHS or DVD somewhere. Despite his best efforts, he was unable to find the clock man on any of the DVDs. The story of Things Clock Man soils. became widely known in 2012 with Commander Santa's post. Yeah, he was soils. However, it can actually be traced all the way back to as early as 2004 on a website known as The Animation Nation. On a thread where users were discussing horror elements in Western animation, a user named Michael W. Howe posted the about clock a man few fucked my mom. he had seen on Nickelodeon's Lucky woman. Wheel when he was younger. Sitting in plain sight amongst the other descriptions was a paragraph that sounded eerily similar to Clockman. I found it once at my first elementary school and then I forgot what it was called. Then there was one based on the story of a little girl who lost her red shoes. 
So she asked a local wizard for help who could appear and disappear anywhere. He helped her, but told her she had to- Damn, this sounds home. intense. The little girl goes home and doesn't, hoping the wizard would forget. But then the music gets eerie as the narrator says, but the wizard did not forget. And we see him appearing and disappearing along the house floors till Thanks, he Risa suddenly potato. pops out of her clock and steals her away, demanding to know why she didn't tell her mom. She makes up for it by Thanks sewing prime stars lumpy. to put in the night sky, and the Sorry next day that, is returned home and tells her mom the truth. And then, of course, there was the Willy Wonka blueberry scene. And also At the time, this description was glossed over and not much thought was given to it by others. This was definitely not a creepypasta. This was real. Man, this guy's gonna give himself a fucking heart attack with excitement. The clock man is a coming. Oh, maybe the 20 Despite gift subs the usernames are hard. Spurned from the discovery Thank of you, Michael username? W. Howe's post, the search died generosity. down and remained dormant for about two years. Then, out of nowhere, the creator of the Lost Media Wiki, known as Dykate, reignited the search. Dykate published an article the on the Lost Media sucks. Wiki detailing the search so Thank far. You as well as his own efforts to contact various Nickelodeon employees that would have information on Pinwheel, and more specifically, Clockman. After having little to no success with reaching out, Daike decided to contact Michael W. Howe. The two sent messages back and forth, solidifying the description from the original Animation Nation post and elaborating on it. The version that came out of these talks is perhaps the most detailed and in depth description of Clockman yet. And of course, I watched the K to 3301. The show starts with a girl getting a new pair of shoes from her mother, who cautions her not to lose them. The girl wanders off a ways to play, but God damn it! Thank you for the 20 gift subs, Alex. She finds she can't thank find you, Alex. shoes. Hope you have a great New Year. After looking everywhere for them, she remembers there's a wizard nearby who might help her. Oh, that was sweet. The strange well, thank thing you, is, we see the wizard appearing and disappearing in trees and in various areas around his home. The girl asks the wizard for help, and he gives her replacement shoes, but tells her that she needs to tell her mother what happened. Makes a prime However, wizard. the girl goes home and doesn't. During the episode, a female narrator can be heard. I still remember her going, she felt that the wizard would forget their deal. Makes a Risa man. The scene then changes back to the wizard's abode with him looking a little upset. The scene then cuts to inside the girl's house where she's in bed with a- Wizard sounds like a real mirror. asshole. As the narrator whispers in an eerie way- They even tin gives up again, Socks. Appreciate it, man. Forget. Uh, we then see two floors of the house, with the wizard appearing and disappearing several times. First on the first floor, then on the second, then outside her door. He then is willing to forgive her if she'll knit stars to place in the sky. Aww. She does so, and he returns her home. It's like Rumpled the Stiltskin, day, but as a child abductor. And instead of her mother calling well, Rumpled police, Stiltskin also abducted children. Uh, the mother it's Rumpled Stiltskin, but with magic. Well. We also see the wizard watching them through a telescope, smiling. That's about 90% of what I remember from... I recall it almost moved like it was stop-motion paper animation. Like they laid the characters on the backgrounds and moved them around. I want to say maybe around the time... How the fuck could this guy remember years. that much at 5 to 7 years old? Holy shit. This guy got the entire short synopsis down. And claims he only saw it when he was five or seven. That's a goddamn lie. This guy made it. This guy helped work on it. No chance. I can't remember shit that detailed when I was five to seven. The closest thing I remember to like, I don't even know, like maybe Prometheus and Bob. I can remember, and I haven't seen this since I was probably five or seven. I can remember little bits and pieces of episodes, but certainly not like a full episode story. How describes a similar tale to the one he posted Thank way back in 2004, but with new vivid details it, that Thank fills you. in the blanks. He describes the narrator, the environmental layout of the shots, one, the Debbie, animation the style, Bimmy. and even some of the lines spoken. P Daddy. How states that he had seen the short multiple times Risa as a child Salu. on Pinwheel. Michael Karp, a writer, director, and voice actor Michael. on Pinwheel, responded to a post Daike had left on his Stage 32 page. Karp responded with a vague memory of the Clockman short saying that the film was most likely produced for the first season of Pinwheel, around 1980 to 1981. 
However, as Carp had come onto the series during the second season, oh, he didn't shit. have any Useless. knowledge of the Clockman shorts. Man, fuck you, he Michael. He did know someone who did, though. Executive producer Tippy Fortune. Tippy responded pretty quickly, impressed with Daikate's investigative skills, antenna. stating that, unfortunately, she just doesn't remember the Clockman shorts. She did reveal something Worthless. pretty interesting, though. Most of the films that aired on Pinwheel were acquired by Co Films. This company had a large library of films from around the world and made their money from selling these films to other studios, such as HBO and Nickelodeon. However, studios like Nickelodeon eventually began to produce really, their own Moon. material, That's interesting. and there was no longer any need to purchase films from Co. Nice. The founder, Bernice Co., attempted to sell off the company, but there were no buyers. It's not really known what no happened. No one wanted to, the company, to buy the Clockman company. No longer in business. When Tippy attempted to Google the company, Bernice Co. and her associate Min Levy, Ooh, thank you for the there raid, were no Peach. results. It was yeah. as if they vanished. Despite the lack of information, thank she you was I hope able you had a great provide. stream. Tippy included the emails of the members on the Pinwheel <clears throat> team that were heavily involved in acquiring programming for the show. She also included a list of children's media organizations that could have a lead on the Clockman shorts. While one of the members, James Calistro, did not reply, two other members, known as Luis Phillips and Bob Perlman, did. But unfortunately, Lois they didn't really have blew any it, information though. that Daike already knew. Five years since the search had began, a Lost Media Wiki user by the name of Nitrate Nerd was doing their own research in the Clockman, in the hopes of finding a lead. They searched for an educational film titled The Wizard on WorldCat, a worldwide library catalog. After scouring through Never several pages, they instead found a listing for a short titled Sally, which had a YouTube link. After following the link, they found that the video was identical to the descriptions made by Commander Santa. Well, that was easy. How? That's right. They found it on YouTube. The video had been uploaded by AAA Studios, the current owners of the shorts. The video was sent to Commander Santa, who confirmed that it was indeed the Clock Man. The long search was finally over. The actual Czechoslovakia was a communist nation at the time. The filmmakers never knew where their film ended up being sold off to. It went on to be sold off to the Learning Company of America, who dubbed it into English and titled it Sally, which eventually was picked up by Co Films, leading it to be broadcast on Pinwheel. With the Clockman finally being discovered, a new search began for the English dub. Thanks on January 11, 2018, about a month after the original was discovered, the English dub appeared online, thanks to a discussion between Lost Media Wiki user Tommy Shadow and the organization known as AV Geeks, an educational film preservation group who had the dub in their archives. A week later, a full one of the longest and most eventful Lost Media searches in recent history. What began as nothing more than just creepypasta speculation became reality, thanks to the dedication and hard work of people like Dike, Michael W. Howe, Nitri Nerd, and so I wonder how many hours the they spent researching. Was finally found. Nice. Well, we got him. Get fucked, clock man. You thought you could hide from us, huh? No, I don't feel like finishing the Smash Mouth, Smash Mouth cookbook. This is going to be reading shitty recipes from Steve. Exit Prime, no. Do you usually not celebrate New Year's? Uh, not really. I'm definitely not celebrating here. Thanks a resub, Jade. Literally everyone has COVID here. Thanks a resub, Gold. Can you watch something in honor of Betty White? I mean, I liked Betty White's work, but I don't think so. I don't think that I don't think that'd be very fun. Things at the bit zero. The cowardly dog episode ever created. I already know what episode it's gonna talk about. The one with the domestic abuse. Yep, that's the one. Such a great episode. Everything in Courage is a fucking masterpiece. There's not a single bad episode in that entire show. It's so good. Easily the best cartoon ever fucking made, man. It looks scary. It definitely was for kids. I remember being a bit scared by some of the Courage episodes as well. In particular, King Ramses and um, the lady in the pot. The lady in the puddle. Why don't you like Big Mouth? Bro, show is absolute utter garbage. What do you mean, why don't I like Big Mouth? Why do you like Big Mouth?
That is an insufferable show to sit through. Fucking Tiana's watched every season, so I see it by proxy. It's terrible. It's awful to look at, and it's always so weird that they have just fully nude child cartoon characters roaming around talking about their, like, in, like titties and pussy and stuff and cock. Like, every single scene in that show always ends with one of the kids talking about jerking off. I, I want to see what he says about this episode. On January 7th, I made a video on the final episode of Curse the Cowardly You're not Dog perfect. and how the concept of perfection is subjective and irrational. That video ended up being my most successful project in my entire Thoughts YouTube on reacting career. content the comment on section Twitch? Of that I've said this a bunch, man. I don't think there's anything wrong with reaction content. I mean, there's a complete difference from just sitting down and eating while videos play or just, you know, going AFK while video plays. But I don't know why people pretend that they don't like to watch videos with friends or watch shit with friends and joke around with each other. It's just genuine fun. Just to kick back with the chat, make jokes about some goofy videos. Like, it's just fun. And you don't have to feel guilty for it. Is it the hardest content in the world or the most creative? Fuck no. And I don't think anyone would argue that. But that doesn't make it any less fun to watch or participate in. But yeah, there is a completely a complete difference from falling asleep and like letting Lord of the Rings play uninterrupted and watching fucking slapping fights or whatever we watch here and whatever like Miz watches from time to time. Like it's just fun. There's nothing wrong with that. That video is absolutely beautiful. And not only do I have you guys to thank for that, but it wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for the show existing in the first place. God, in so the first too. video, I mentioned how Curse the Carly Dog was not afraid to be too real with his morals and mm -hmm. life messages. It got dark. And I think the episode and I loved it for that. is the epitome of that statement. Not even oh, 90 epitome. seconds pass and That's there's this is. evil Max Sorry. Lady beating the crap out of Courage. This Max Lady goes by the name Kitty. Mario and her optimistic hey, self invites Kitty inside for a cup of tea. Max it, Lady beats no. up Courage some more and she sits at the table with the crew. Here, she informs the three of her current situation. Her best friend, Bunny, fell in love with a gangsta dog. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just sounds so stupid when I say it out loud. In other words... Well, that's not how they say it in the show. The dog is, is just a gangster who's abusive. Yeah. With a dog who treats her it's, it's like a slave. Not like when goofy the dog or anything. found out Kitty was trying to get Bunny to run away, he threatened her life. So, she was forced to leave her Cody home and, and her best friend. She jaded. feels lost without Bunny. Then Eustace completely roasts the Max Lady. Take that mask off, you might see better. Oh! So she gets super pissed, leaves this the was table, a kid's show. and says the following words. Dogs are evil. Hence why she tried to kill Courage for no reason. And she's not done. While Courage is minding his own business watching TV, it is Max to Lady date, I still believe the best again. cartoon and ever made. he tries to unclog the toilet, guess who's there to make his life a living hell? This show is honestly the closest thing you can get to a cartoon version of the average horror movie. I'm surprised they greenlit this episode, to be honest. That's how disturbing some of these scenes get. So Courage gets tired of getting beaten up, so he decides to steal Kitty's most prized possession. A toy mouse that had Nettie ran friend, longer than Courage. Bunny that had Nettie was her. still a good show. The reason Courage does this is because he believes Max Lady we is out to murder. Did we watch this? I mean, I've already seen the episode and everything, but I don't, I don't remember watching the video breakdown of it. But yeah, it's a. The episode is all about uh, Kitty and Bunny. Uh, Bunny's in an abusive relationship. It's, it's a lot, and it's really good. The whole show is so fucking good. I made a whole video essay like three years ago on Courage the Cowardly Dog. I think it still pops up as one of the first things when you just type in the show. No, never mind. I've fallen off. I went past it. Did I? No, this is just me reacting to the theory. Which wasn't even really a theory. Russian soldier catches bullets. This? Please read some kinetic. Okay. 
Nice. Well, that's not real, but that's cute. Dating on Demand? What a title. Dating on Demand compilation from Cringe Blog. What? That's Charles Manson, by the way. Well, I want people to know about me is I'm sort of a wild and crazy Easy tier one guy, golden really resub hentai. Really strange. I mean, but at the same time, I'm also sort of normal, down to earth. I mean, I live at home with my parents, although that shouldn't be a detraction against people. I really care about things and the people that I Is this like a skit about. or something? I'm very friendly. I'm very outgoing if you get to know. Somebody that likes to have fun. The worst thing that could happen on a date is that the guy is laid back and he doesn't... He's just not fun, okay? Because laid back... I True. mean, I don't have anything against laid back people, but... Nah, just fuck them. But unfortunately, beat him too much. Now he's very stupid. Sexiest what? thing about me, everything. Kinky side. Back there, get very kinky sometime. Crazy place ever full around in Dragon Cave. Waste lots of time. What the fuck is this? There's many husbands. Need new husband. Unique talent and skill. Very good at making Nas husband and Jake. Obey. The reason Asimar, Umbri, and Prosciutto. If they make movie about life, about me, movie I I is theater. Yes, they would they would make. Very nice, very good. I'm sure she got laid as a result.